Hello there, and welcome. What you're going to be watching is a Company of Heroes 2 user interface breakdown. What we're going to be doing is comparing the user interface as it stands in open beta Company of Heroes 2, June 2013, to Company of Heroes 1. We're going to be looking at it, we're going to be discussing its appearance firstly, then we're going to go into its functionality, and then, you know, it'll be, it'll be an interesting video, hopefully. <laughs> um, let's start off with what they've done. They've basically taken all the features from Company of Heroes 1, uh, moved them about a bit, changed how they appear, but they've tried to build upon and not remove any functionality. Um, if we could start with the tactical map, for example, that's in the bottom left of the screen, of course, we know where it is. Company of Heroes 2 has seemed to have taken a slight step back in appearance, but they have included more functionality. Um, let's see if we can highlight that to you. So this is how it appears. You can see straight off the bat, proportionality and size does seem to have taken a step back. Um, you can't see and distinguish and contrast between the sectors as easily as you can in Company Heroes 1. This is Company Heroes 2. This is Company Heroes 1. And hopefully you'll agree with me there. However, you can do more in Company of Heroes 2's tactical map. Once you've got a unit selected, you can manipulate that however you'd like. You can retreat it. You can um, use all the shortcuts available in your um, keyboard. Theoretically speaking, you could actually, if you, there you go, I'm selecting the buildings there. You could use your shortcuts, build armies, and conduct all of your operations entirely from the tactical map, which does give me a um, semi-erection. It's quite, it's 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 nice to see, because in Company of Heroes 1, there's certain things you couldn't do. You couldn't retreat units within the tactical map. You could organise flanks, you could um, even organise um, control groups and what have you, but you couldn't do all of the shortcuts that you need to do, so you'd constantly have to flick between. You, which, you wouldn't want to be in tactical map all the time anyway, but it's just nice to have that level of functionality second level of improved functionality. You can interact with the tactical map whilst in the game screen. So let me go over to these chaps here. Um, if you watch my cursor, this cursor here, go all the way to the left, I can shift command an entire capping order whilst not even having to bring the tactical map up. And that's great. They've basically made it so you can interact the small scale tactical map is the big scale tactical map and that could be why it doesn't scale so well in terms of proportionality but what I will remind you is that Company of Heroes 1 tactical map wasn't a completed article when the game was first released it took until mid 2007 until they had the full um, looks and functionality of what we can see now um, I mean, it was great on release, and it still is to this day one of the best features ever implemented in a real-time strategy game, but it wasn't the completed version, so there is a lot of room for growth. Hopefully, hopefully, the growth that we'll see is um, a lot better visual appearance. Let's talk about other aspects. Going from left to right across our screen, you can see the unit icons and the information contained therein. It's got a bigger uh, bigger face, like a Doom game, where you can see your unit's face, or your character's face rather. Um, it's got veterancy displayed here. It's got um, the health. It's got the temperature gauge, because obviously with cold tech, there's a lot of room for temperature gauge. Um, and kill count is displayed immediately as one number, like a running total. And it's then got a breakdown when you hover over it. Compared to Co. 1, that's um it is slightly different i mean the you, the character screen is more of a unit icon it's not a kind of uh, a face interaction which i think is a call to try and get a better kind of understanding for your troops and care for your troops but it could be you know that could be a design choice and then we've got the kill count less slightly less information contained um but i think it takes up the same amount of space we then got this this space here in the centre. This is completely and utterly um, taken up here. In Company of Heroes 1, there was a lot of wasted space. You see that this box here, this box here, they're completely useless. Um, in fact, streamers often put their webcams or bits of information in those spaces. 
in this Comedy Heroes 2 game, we've now got a paragraph of text. But you've got to remember, after a month of playing the game, you don't need to know that Grenadiers are the core infantry soldier of the German army anymore. You know, or ever. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, but at least they are including things to try and get people into the game. I'm going to take a break from talk discussing each feature now, and I want to discuss how they've changed things from Company of Heroes Alpha to Beta. And how I'm going to do that for you is going to get rid of the UI, which seems a bit strange. I'm going to bring up a still of the Alpha UI. Um, I've cut this out very crudely in Photoshop, but hopefully it displays just how much good work they've done on it so far. There you go. The biggest change, the best change, is a change from green versus red to blue versus red. The green versus red was an absolutely abhorrent travesty of a decision because obviously, you know, I think a fifth of all males or something crazy, a big statistic like that, are colorblind. Green versus red. So, how are they going to distinguish in a very competitive game? Who's si who's on whose side? What territories they control? It was a daft decision. We're glad they backtracked it, and thank God they did. Um, also, they've made the unit icon smaller, so they can bring the command wheel from the right to the left, which is more in keeping with the command rule, command uh, ribbon from the first game. I think this that's a great change. Um, because it contains all the units uh, information and stuff on the left side. On the right side in the new game you've now got a call to arms for everything contained, all the information contained about building units for example your resources and uh, the units you can actually create is on the right side. It's all self-contained. And I'm going to point out an absolutely astonishing feature well, astonishing. We're getting excited over something so small, but to me it is. We've been playing this game for years. Um, when you want to s know how much you need to build a unit, the information actually hovers above the resources. So the horizontal strip of information does actually have a lot of thought put behind it. And I think that's great to point out. I mean, look, we need 200 manpower to construct a Pioneer Squad. We currently have 352, so I know I can build one just like that. Um, for new players, this is a godsend. They don't have to pan their eyes from the right all the way over to the left um, just to kind of work out the mental maths. It's all very quickly ascertained by just hovering over things. And that's a great um, a great feather in the cap of Company of Heroes 2. Um, when Company of Heroes 1 Alpha first came out, people were really aghast at the new UI. And that was one of the big things said. People didn't like the um, horizontal layout versus the vertical layout. Um, yeah, because the idea was that your eyes can't track vertically as um, they can't track horizontally as fast as they can vertically, which I think is a bit of a moot point. I don't think that makes much sense, really. I mean, for example, when you're in a competitive environment, you only want to know which resource you're thinking about at that point. You don't want to, oh, I know, I'm going to sit back and think about all four resources and look at them all. No, you just want to say, have I got enough munitions for my strafe? Yes, I have. Let's do it. Boom, strafe. Um, so the vertical space versus horizontal space argument is in it is pretty stupid. Um, going onwards, I want to discuss the command ribbon in Company of Heroes 2 versus the command ribbon in Company of Heroes 1. I think it's better in 2. I think it's tidier in 1, in that it's hover over, but I think I, I know, I don't think, I know that new players and players that have only been playing like for under a year have barely interacted with the command ribbon and Cumbria as one. I strongly doubt that anybody thinks, oh, what are these little blue shield icons? I'm going to get into them. Cumbria Heroes 2 is massively different. It's a great feature. It's control, it uh, eventually covers, you know, the entire right side of your screen, but at great value. You can see all the information. Let's go from left to right. We've got a Panzer Grenadier Squad in green cover. We've got a Grenadier Squad with an LMG. We've got a Grenadier Squad freezing to death. Oh, shit, let's get them inside and give them some soup. Um, and we've got a Flamer Squad in yellow cover. Basically, it's it's great stuff. See that little icon to the top right of my right at MG? I reckon he's in a house. He's in a house. Do you know how I knew that? They've got a little house icon there. 
And if you go to the tap map, all this information is, is taken to it. So after a year of playing this, we are going to really get used to it, and it's become going to become a great part of the game. Um, immediately when you first start playing it, you're like, oh, what's all this horrible blinking shit? But after a month or so, you're going to love it. Trust me on that one. Well, I, I hope you are, because I've, I certainly think it's the best thing they've done in the new game. Um, for it, let me. What's the best way for me to convey that? When you're in the middle of a frenzied environment, those little red blinking "Oh, I'm in combat" icons are gonna just shout out at you. So you're gonna go, "Oh shit, my engineers are in combat. I best put them behind cover." And then you'll see that they're behind cover. It's gonna be a very good feature of the game. Talking about overall appearances, I think the best way to convey appearances is to um, do what I'm about to do. I'm gonna show you stills going from. Co one to alpha to beta. I'd argue that beta is the more attractive of the three. I think Co one was a pioneering interface, but it's got a lot of grey textures that look murky. It's a little bit disgusting. It doesn't contrast well with the game environment. I'll point that out to you now. Let's even go back to longer. Um, it it looks like it's like. Just wash your brain away from playing this game for the past several years. Just look at it with fresh eyes. It looks like it's a grey blob hovering over the world. Company Heroes 2... Oh, hang on, let me get rid of Company Heroes 1 firstly. Company Heroes 2 tries to immerse itself in the environment. For example, there's a slight uh, hue of blue and greys within the con within the confines of the taskbar. So it's got a better contrast, I believe. I think it's more attractive. I, I do think the texts are, are more readable. I don't think they were when it first came out, but I do think they are now. I think all the arguments against it have been met at least halfway in most facets of the UI. There's the original one, and there it is now. I, I think um, you can read things and it contrasts a lot better. I'm running out of things to say, to say now, which tells me internally that it's time to wrap this video up. Um, I'm going to contain all the three um, image stills in the information bar of YouTube. Um, in terms of YouTube and myself, I do plan to be making a lot of videos over the coming year about Coming Heroes 2. I'm going to try and shy away from making long videos anymore. I'm, I've got a bit of a longer hour job. I'm going to be making shorter videos such as this one, under 20 minutes. So if you if you like this kind of content, please do subscribe. It uh, increases my EP ever so slightly. Um, thank you for watching. Goodbye.